He is baseball Hall of Famer and my longtime ESPN colleague, Joe Morgan, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Joe? Well, it's your fault you haven't talked to me. Is that... <laughs> That's a but, great uh... Joe Morgan way to start this thing. I love it. I love it. About it, about it. I'm glad you mentioned, but you know, the the health scare was a couple of years ago, and I am perfectly fine now. Got and hobbling around a little bit on a knee that I got a knee replacement that has caused me some problems, but. Health-wise, I'm doing great, so I'm glad to talk to you. I'm, gl- I'm glad to be talking to you as well, Joe. How much yeah. uh, How much baseball are you, you taking in? Are uh, you watching well, a lot, taking it all in? What do you got for me, Joe? Yeah, I take it all in. Yeah, I, I actually work for the Reds. I'm you know, an advisor to the Reds, and I have been for a long time. And uh, so I'm involved you know, with them on a daily basis, so to speak. And then I watch baseball because I love baseball. So, yeah, I am familiar with just about everything that's going on. What do you think of Altuve, Joe? What do you think I of him? I think that Altuve is the best player in the game. People won't give him credit, and I think it's because he's five, six, or whatever. I mean, I don't know what else you can do. I mean, he hits home runs, he drives in runs, he steals bases, he plays defense, and uh, I, I don't know, and he scores runs. I don't know if there's anything else you can do on the field, but I really, you know, admire him and just the way he goes about his business. And let's face it, he's won three batting championships. So. Um, I mean, all these other guys are real good, but I think he's the best and most consistent. What's the reason why you heard most that you couldn't when you were playing? When they say Joe Morgan can't, well, what's the big reason you got? They said you can't play because you're too small. <laughs> right. but, uh, it wasn't any specific thing because I always had speed. And believe it or not, when I was younger, I had a really strong arm because I was a shortstop. Uh, and I always could hit the ball farther than the guys on our own team, you know, but it was still just it's too small, and I think that was the that was the thing. It wasn't that I couldn't play, you know. Uh, I remember when I was being scouted, a lot of teams would say, "Man, you're a great little player." You know, little was always included. And one of the reasons I signed with the Houston Astros or the Colt 45s at the time was because their scouts never mentioned anything other than I was a great player. He's never mentioned little, so. Uh, that stuck with me. It wouldn't have mattered because I had in my own mind what I could do. Joe Morgan, Baseball Hall of Famer, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. A lot of hand-wringing last year about pace of play. Now it's about quality of play. And I got to tell you, pace of play <laughs> I was never really concerned about because I'm, I was always going to sit there and watch a game no matter no matter what. And I understand about a, a younger generation. I am definitely more concerned about quality of play. I mean, the All-Star game is kind of a perfect example. 48% yeah. of the game was either a walk, strikeout, or a home run. And that seems to be the way things are going right now. Are you concerned about it, Joe? I'm definitely concerned because, you know, I don't ever like to talk about, you know, when I played and so forth. When I played, it was different. And today's game is different. I'm not going to say mine was better or this is worse. It's just different. And you have to get accustomed to what's going on. And I've been doing that, so to speak. It just uh, bothers me, all the strikeouts, you know, the home runs, you know, chicks big, big long ball, so people are going to try to hit home runs. And the home runs, you know, the fact that there's just not much action, even in the All-Star game, the greatest players in the game are out there on the field. I never saw great defensive plays. You know, I never saw guys running the bases. I never saw anybody stealing bases. All I saw was guys standing there swinging for home runs. And, and, you know, okay, they connected 10 times, so I guess that's the way to do it. Uh, But there were 25 or so strikeouts, if I remember correctly, a lot of strikeouts. So, I mean, that's just the way the game is played now. As you mentioned, strikeouts, walk, or home runs, those are things that people are, are, are doing now. And the shifts are making it even worse for guys, you know, to try to hit for an average. So, you know, the game is different. Again, you know, a lot of adjustments have to be made as far as I'm concerned to make this a really, really interesting game to watch. Were you ever stationed in short right field? I mean, no. you never did that? No shift like that? I got, well, I got right short right when McCovey was hitting or nice. Stargell, you know, somebody, you know, that's going to hit it hard and they didn't run that well. But now I watch them, they shift on guys that are not really slow runners or not really guys that bang the ball. You know, they, it's just a normal – you know, of course, it's the, it's the defense that they played in 2018. You know, they just moved guys around. So what's the fix? If you could wave, if you could make a change, Joe, what would it be? Well, the fix has to come from the players. You know, first of all, remember this, you know, you know, and I hear this about stopping the shifts and all that kind of stuff. I don't agree with that because 
that's like telling the guy you can't throw Rich Eisen a curveball because he can't hit it. You've got to throw him fastball so he can hit it. That's not right. Guys have to make adjustments. They have to go the other way. If they do that a few times, they're going to stop the shift. But guys want to hit through the shift or over the shift. And they want to hit over it because, you know, the home runs are what they're paying for now. And so it has to come from the players. I don't think you can legislate this game the way, you know, we would like for it to be. So I think it's going to be on the players. If the players stay that way, then it's up to the general managers to pay the guys who do the right thing. You know, if I see guys that hit 20 home runs, driving 60 runs, and they make a lot of money. And, I'm not, and I always like guys to make money, first of all, because, you know, players, I think, were shortchanged for so many years. But now they make a lot of money, and that's great. But I also want the quality, like you said, the game to continue. And it can't continue if guys are going to try to keep hitting through the shifts. Hall of Famer Joe Morgan here on the Rich Eisen Show. Joe, I'm sure you're seeing the headlines uh, about uh, sports gambling and how it's going to become more prevalent in America. And uh, sports leagues are now going to entertain the idea uh, of how to monetize it. Do you think uh, with that now being a new backdrop that baseball should revisit the case of Pete Rose for enshrinement in the Hall of Fame? Well, well, let me back up for a second. You talked about, uh, you know, the game and gambling. First of all, years ago, uh, I was asked as part of a, you know, I guess a experiment to decide where the next, uh, you know, expansion team was going. This was before Tampa Bay and everything. And, and they talked about Las Vegas. And I was against it because I felt like if you get the players in Las Vegas, you just don't know what's going to happen. And I didn't think the risk was worth the reward. So uh, that's the way I feel about gambling. Now, uh, uh, about Pete and gambling and whatever, I don't really believe they're going to revisit it. And I'll tell you, you know, it just seems like, um, you know, Pete's the forgotten guy in a way. Uh, you know, now it's about PED users and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, Pete's case, I guess, and I, I'm, on, I'm not speaking from any special knowledge. I guess his case has been put on the back shelf. Tell me about the uh, 1955 Little League State Championship documentary, Long Time Coming, Joe. What do you well, got for me well, here? Well, Rich, it's very important to me, and, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, in 1955, I was 12 years old, and I lived in California. Every day I'd go out, I'd play with you know black kids, white kids, Hispanic kids, Asian kids. So I played every day with different groups. And then I didn't realize that it was still that way in 1955 in Florida that African Americans couldn't play against the white kids. And that was, remember, that's, you know, eight years after Jackie Robinson had been in the major league. So uh, it sh shocked me at first. And then I watched the story and I started to see, and then I understood. You know, there were a lot of times when the white kids would forfeit rather than play against the black kids. But I give the Little League credit for pushing the fact that they wanted the best team to come out of that, you know, out of each uh, state. And therefore, you had to play to get there. So the kids would forfeit, but the black kids could not get to the uh, Little League World Series because you can only take a couple of four fixtures. Anyway, it, it was great because these kids, 12-year-old kids from Orlando, played against you know the black kids from uh, Pensacola, and they played this game. And it's you know it's that old saying: it doesn't matter who won or lost the game, but how they played the game. And they played the game great, and they learned a lot about each other. And I say you have to give the families of both these groups credit because they let their kids you know be the first to do this. Now, the great thing about the movie is not just about that game in 1955. It's about 1975, 1995. It, it talks about the civil rights struggle and how we have changed in this country. And then all of those kids that are around that were kids at the time, they're 70 year old now, they got together at that same ball field for a reunion to talk about how their lives had been affected. Uh, by that first game, and I think it's great. And I was at a screening in uh, Washington D.C. last Sunday, and I was with a couple of the guys from each team. And I have to tell you, it was uh, very emotional for me because, as I said, I was 12 years old, and I was able to pursue my dream of making it to the major leagues. And these kids, these black kids in 
Florida were not, and not a place in the South, not just Florida, they were not able to pursue their dreams. And I think this film with, that has Hank Aaron, you know, talks about it, David Johnson, uh, Gary Sheffield, and Cal Ripken Jr. So it's a very, very well done film, and it brings out the emotion and it shows what these kids how that game changed their race, their, their race relationships going forward. Not with these kids because they didn't see each other for all those years and they got together again. But uh, I just think it's a great movie, especially in this time, day and age when it seems like we're becoming more divided than before. And I think the young people that watch this and the older people who watch it, I think they'll see that they do have a role and trying to bring both of the races together as we go forward. Long time coming, Dot Film, uh, and it was way too long. My bad, Joe. Uh, we, uh, I'm going to call you every month now. Be careful. Uh, hey, okay? hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to do it, for sure. You know, I'm, you're always one of my favorite announcers. I, I really mean that. I don't say that too often, I, but you were, and I, I really, well, you are, but I, I really, you know, would appreciate talking to you joe every once in a while we don't have to talk on the air okay you got it that's <laughs> right. it that's done okay. deal thank you joe appreciate it you're the Thank best you. that's it that's joe okay. morgan hall of famer how about that the rich eisen show weekdays at noon eastern on audience